I'm going to call this one uh, My Reality is Not Based on Circumstances. My reality is not based on everything I see, hear, and feel with my physical senses. And I'm going to read from the book of Philippians, chapter 4. Philippians, chapter 4. I have learned... This didn't come naturally. I have learned how to be content. I am not disturbed and I'm not disquieted in whatever state or condition I'm in. I've learned how to be abased and to live humbly in stressful circumstances. I've also learned how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned that in any and in all circumstances, the secret of facing every situation, whether I'm well fed with enough to spare or I'm going hungry and I'm in want, I have strength for all things. I have the strength necessary to endure the hard times. And I also have the strength to not let the good times affect my faith and dependence on God. I'm ready for anything. Through Him, through God, who infuses inner strength into me. I don't fret. I don't have anxiety about anything. Um, This is Paul saying this. I I have a ways to go here. (laughs) This isn't me talking. This is where I'm... This is my goal. Okay. I don't have anxiety about anything. And here's why. Because in every single circumstance, by prayer, with thanksgiving, I make my wants known to God. And God's peace, that state of of a soul assured of salvation through the Messiah. That state of a soul content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is produces a peace within me which transcends all natural understanding. And I'd also like to read 1 John. This is from chapter 5. Know this. Settle this in your heart and mind. Be conscious of these two realities. One, you are of God. Settle that. And if you follow your conscience... You are of God. Two, the whole world around you, we call it, I like the term matrix. This entire world around you, the material world, the cosmos, that's the Greek word, is under the power of, not under the power of God. The whole world is under the power of the evil one. I 
I think the real key to knowing who is spiritually mature and developed and who isn't, and it, it lets me know I've got a ways to go. It isn't knowledge. Spiritual maturity and development is not gauged by how well you know the Bible. It isn't. Spiritual maturity is gauged by how content how content you are regardless of your circumstances. Whether good circumstances or bad, your reality, your, con your consciousness, yes, what you're aware of doesn't hinge on circumstances, good or bad. Your strength, the, the power to get up every day and do what you know to do, doesn't, is not dependent on, does not hinge on external factors. That strength comes from inside. And ultimately, that strength comes from God. Now, the narcissist or people who cling to this narcissistic world system, and it is, this Babylonian world system founded by Nimrod, is narcissistic. There's no empathy in it. There's no empathy for the weak or the poor in this system we live in. It caters to the strong, the powerful, the rich, the dominant. But they have a weakness. There's a flaw in this system, and it's a big one, and it's going to lead to its downfall. The followers and adherents of this world system are all circumstance-based, external circumstance. Their reality, I'm talking about the people who believe in and cling to this world, their reality is based on everything they see with these eyes, and everything they hear with these. There's nothing inside them. There's no truth inside these people. Even if they aren't narcissists, if, they're, if they've placed their faith in any degree in this world system, especially today, there's not much going on in here, trust me. Not much going on in the inner man. It's pretty dry. So if things are going good, they're happy, they're good. But when things go bad in the material realm, they crumble. They fall apart. We are seeing that now, and we're going to see a whole lot more of that. Now, the narcissist is totally circumstance-based. Re the, the reality of the narcissist, if you want to call it that, his reality is false. At its core, it's falsehood, but... He's completely circumstance-based. 
when circumstances don't go the narcissist way, they fly into a rage, don't they? Yeah. Dude. And they'll want to kill you. It, 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 that's what a scapegoat is, man. A scapegoat is someone that these, especially the malignant narcissists, they want to eliminate and terminate you, hoping that that will make them feel a little better because things aren't going my way, and I need someone to blame. It's what makes them so dangerous. That's why you need to get away from them. No, I believe the people I'm talking to are men and women who follow or endeavor to. <laughs> we endeavor at least to maintain a clear conscience. We live from within. We live independent of outside circumstances. We live like the author of Philippians lives. We're content. Whether our circumstances are abundant or lean, um, our joy, our strength, our consciousness, our sense of reality is unmoved, is not swayed. We're hooked up to the light, and that's a constant stream of light. We're hooked up to that. We're hooked up to the truth. It's an unseen truth. It's unseen light to the natural eye. It's, it's unseen reality. It's unseen strength. It's unseen peace. It's shalom. It's wholeness that refreshes us from within. Thank you, God. He's the source of it. My purpose in life isn't based on anything material. My reason for being, my reason for existence, it is not based on anything in this world. So the things that happen in this world that happen to me and toward those I love, I, you know, I may not be pleased with them. I may get emotional over it. But it's not going to sway me off the path I'm on. I'm going to read that again in 1 John. My heart and mind is settled. I know I'm of God. I'm His. He's mine. I know He is for me, not against me. In my faith, Christianity, I know that the blood of the Messiah has cleansed me of all condemnation. I've settled that. I've settled that. I also know this. This is settled in me as well. 
that the whole material world around me is under the power of the evil one, not the good one. You know, I kind of understand it when people say, why do, good, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, my dear friend, we live in a world under the control of evil. The question really is, or statement is, it's amazing anything good happens materially to me in this world. It's, it's a miracle anything good happens. You hear what I'm saying? It's amazing if anything good happens in this world. Which is under the power and the control and the authority of the devil. Of Lucifer. Evil incarnate. And, he, and his followers, they're running the show right now. Even in the good old USA, they're running the show. For now. So, I don't know. Do you have anything to add? Settle that in your heart. And I'm talking to myself. I'm learning, too. I've definitely not arrived. <laughs> Which is good. I'm, you know, when you think you've reached adulthood and full maturity spiritually, uh, man, I don't want anything to do with you. Because these things are difficult. Don't kid yourself. Living in a physical body is not fun. Living in a matrix under the control of the devil, it's not very pleasant. I'm reminded of what Yeshua said when he, you know, he... I'll paraphrase, but he said, You act surprised that men hate you. Why are you acting shocked that men hate you and persecute you? What are you surprised about? And we do. I still do. I mean, I can't, I can't believe it. How could they hate me? How could they treat me that way? And Yeshua's looking at me like, Really? <laughs> they hated me. Now, let's settle it in our hearts. Let's settle that our purpose in this life has nothing to do with material gain or loss or any of that. It has nothing to do with our flesh either. I, I can't believe I have to say this with all this race baiting going on and trying to divide us by our skin color and cultural differences. I, I thought... And gender now, I thought we outgrew that back in the 60s and 70s. I guess not. I thought we progressed beyond that. I'm being sarcastic. Same old trick. Same old devil. Same old narcissist. Huh? Divide and conquer. Same, Divi same old divide and conquer game. No, my reality is not based on what color my skin is or your skin is or even really what religion you are and what religion I am. That's why I'm not going to engage in a debate. If you follow your if you endeavor to follow your conscience, your inner compass, you're my buddy. You're my friend, you're my ally. I really don't care what religion you are or what denomination you are. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, Lizzie. Hi. Uh-oh, don't step there. <laughs> we love this cat. We, we just rescued her a few weeks ago. And uh, I think she's going to make it. 
We wondered. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to cut it off here, and I hope I hope I got what out what I got out what I wanted to get out. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Yeah, settle it in your hearts that you belong to God. God belongs to you. He's uh, He's going to help you. If you can, I've, I'm going to keep saying this too. If you came out. Of an abusive situation in the mind of God you are his he is a father to the fatherless and a defender of the widow that's who he is it's not just a promise that's who and what he is settle that in your heart and mind that'll <laughs> that will help you and help me live above circumstances. And you might be asking, I guess I'm not done, you might be asking, how do I settle this in my heart? I don't have all the answers for that, but to the best of your ability, Train your mind. Like Paul said, I had to learn how to be content in all circumstances. This does not come naturally. It's like the book of Hebrews says, train your senses. Your senses can be trained to discern good from bad. It does not happen naturally. It does not happen organically. Shut off the devices. Shut, shut off the stuff that they feed to you through your devices that counters this message I'm sharing with you, that, that is opposed to the truth. It's opposed to Scripture. Opposed to who and what you are in God. Shut those messages off. Shut that messaging off. Do that. That's an easy thing to do. Turn off the news. Feed your mind on things that edify your spirit. Start with the Bible. That's one way to help settle your mind and heart on the truth, on spiritual realities. Um, talk to yourself. You're not crazy if you talk to yourself, if you talk the right things. Speak to your soul. This is scriptural. Yeah, David did it in Psalms. David did it in Psalms. He did. Yes, yeah, self, we are not moved by these circumstances. Self, we are only moved by the Spirit of God and the Word of God, period. But anyway, and I, I'm sure there are other ways. Whatever way works, settle it in your mind and heart that your reality, your truth, isn't based on anything you see, hear, or feel in this world system or circumstances. We live independent of circumstances, good or bad. I'll be honest, sometimes I think the good circumstances, when everything's going your way, uh, that scares me sometimes more than the bad because it, I know I do. I have a tendency kind of to drift away from dependence on God for having my needs met when everything's going my way. So sometimes it's even more difficult, not less. 
But I don't have to worry about that now. <laughs> I'm not worried about that right now. Thank you.